Debbieites, we are back once again for our weekly recap of the best show on television, Outlander. We haven't been around for a little while because Paula and I have been sunning it up in beautiful sunny Fiji, cocktails on the beach. But you know what? Mm-hmm. We are back to we are back. We're back to reality. And we're here to talk about Outlander and we're very excited because that episode was really damn good. It was um, The World Turned Upside Down. It was written by Tony Graffia and directed by Justin Malotnikoff. And this, now everyone hold on. This is what Stars says is the description of the episode. Ready? It's very, very detailed. A dysentery epidemic strikes the ridge full stop. So I'm like, that's okay, it. That's it. That's it. Normally they give you a full paragraph. That's all you get. Yeah, they give you like I'm a good thinking, taster. Is there more to it? Is there is this going to be just a boring chess piece episode? Or are we going to see something else? Well, surprise, surprise, a lot happened in this episode. And I remember when I was either like in the pool at Fiji or on the beach. After cocktail number 10, I got a Twitter message or Instagram message from our good friend Dimity, and she Mm. wrote to me and she said, Rob, this episode is a killer. It's so good. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Katrina Bell, she's the best. She's the best. And I'm like, really? Yeah. I'm like, okay. Okay. I'm interested. I'm I'm curious. Speaking of Dimity, why don't we bring her on? Dimity, join us to the chat because we've got some really special guests today. Um, Hello and welcome. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. So good to have you back. I know, Dimity, you sent me that message and I thought, I think Dimity's going to have a heart attack. Like, she's <laughs> she so happy because I know, like, of all the people that love this show, there's a whole group of people who would say Katrina Balk, you know, that how much they respect and admire her, and you're right up there. And right I'm, up there. You're right up there at the top, and that's what I love. <laughs> um, so welcome to the chat, Dimity. We've got so much to talk about today, but before we yep. do... Mm. We actually have two other special guests. I'm going to bring in the second one. That's Stacey. Stacey from snowy Canada. She, she's in the middle of a snowstorm, but she loves this show that much that she's to, agreed to join us anyway. Thank you for joining us today, Stacey. Thank you for having me. Hello. I'm so excited to hear what you thought about the episode as well. But before we go even down that road, we have one more guest today, and that is the one and only Diane Manning. She is calling from somewhere in the US because I've completely forgotten where she's calling from because she used to be from Massachusetts, but I forgot where she moved. California. California. I'm in the Palm Desert right now. It's 100 oh, degrees. That's right. It's Ooh, like wow. desert, snow, <laughs> mountains. City. Yep. We're all over the joint. So We've got everything. Yeah, I'm representing the snow. Yeah. I am the token male in this group and that's cool. I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm so happy to have you on as well, Diane. Thank you. Um, this is m- this is my special A team of um, Super Outlander fans, uh, and at some point, uh, you know, we'll bring in new people from Twitter uh, as well. But for now, this is it. So we have so much to talk about. I don't even really know where to begin, but I think what I'd love to do is just get from each of you your general thoughts about the episode. Loved it, hated it. We don't have to go into specifics yet because then we'll, we'll delve a little deeper. Um, why don't I start with Dimity? Because I know that you, at, it, at first, your first reaction was, wow, Katrina Balfe, she killed it. So why don't you, why don't you kick us off? Well, it was jam-packed. It was like one season of one episode. And I think that's what I loved about it. There were so many twists and turns. And, of course, uh, Katrina Balfe. Uh, so many scenes, uh, the dialogue with Sam. I won't go into detail, sorry. Um, yeah, so I think it was so jam-packed and that's why I liked it. And, of course, um, outstanding performances from the lead actors. Yeah. Yeah. So, Do you think, um, did you appreciate it as well because, like, the season's been interesting so far, but there hasn't been any, like, really major earth-shattering events yet, and this was the episode where we got some really juicy stuff. Is that what you loved the most most about it? Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was we, were, we felt like it was building to something. And with that short description from Stars, thank you, Stars, you're going, oh, come on, <laughs> what do you got? Um, so, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I, I just really liked that it. it was jam-packed and, um and it was, yeah, we can talk about details. It was very fast-paced. Um, and I'll ta- I have some more kind of measured. I've watched it a few times since, and I still think it's an outstanding episode. But um, I think 
yeah, there's a few, I think, yeah, there's a few reasons why it, it could have been, I reckon there could have been taken more time with some things. So anyway. Mm. Yes. Okay, good. That's yes. good. Let's, put, let's park that one because I think we've got mm. more to talk about on that point. Yep, yep. What about you, Stacey? What did you think of the episode? I really, really enjoyed it. And it was one, I've also watched it a couple of times and I think my appreciation for it has grown the more I've like sat with it and actually talked to other people about their perspectives about it. Um, and I mean, um, obviously, of course, I am on the, I love Katrina Balf, amazing. Um, and I thought she was also so amazing. It was nice to see like her have a moment this season um, where she just had quite a few scenes where she just like, not to get into, we'll, we'll leave specifics for later, but there was just even yeah. slight moments where I was like, oh my goodness, um, you know, so I'll forever be carrying that. I'm, I'm still bitter about her uh, Oscar snub, but it's fine. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just had to get that in there. But anyway, yes. I thought she was amazing. And I thought, and I absolutely loved Sam in this as well. I thought he brought some, like a really nuanced performance to Jamie in certain moments that it could could have been very easy to be really big and like play for the drama um and there's a few scenes I won't I won't say which but it was like watching two tennis pros back and forth like I thought it was just awesome mm. so you know so um but yes they're they're it, it's something that my appreciation for it grew um the second and third time I watched it so okay. yeah okay so maybe um maybe you do need to kind of watch it again because I've only seen it once. We, just, we watched it yesterday. Yeah, I see what you're mm. saying because the, you, then you get the little, you get the nuances, the, the things where they're telegraphing that you don't know what's going to happen. That's a very interesting point. We might go down that road later. Diane, what did you think of the episode? What, what were your thoughts? Well, to do it tight, I would say I was elated by much of what was there and I was devastated by a few things that weren't. Wow. So that's okay. short. That's <laughs> no short. specifics. We'll go on. <laughs> okay. That's really interesting. Paula, what did you think of the episode? Um, oh, no, I think I'm going to, you know what I thought. Um, I think I'm going to have to take a leaf out of Stacey's book and I'm going to have to watch it again um, because when I watched it, I was like, okay, I love that. I love that. And I love that. But I was like, I get that, but it, I felt like it was a slightly of a chess move piece as well. Okay. I appreciated all the little nuances in there, but at the same time, I was expecting so much. And maybe I was, I had the bar up here. I was expecting this and I got like normal here, but, and I got this. I think that's my, that was my issue with the episode. Still loved it but I was expecting so much more to happen. Okay, because that's where I sit. I was expecting, like, one of the greats. And mm. I think we need to manage our expectations because this yeah. seems to be a bit more subdued, low-key. I don't know. Like, it's not, yeah, I was expecting it to be, like, wow. The first half I was waiting for something to happen. Um, it's the second half where Katrina Balfe gives a masterclass in acting. And yeah. even Sam is very restrained. I saw some comments about Sam where they were saying he didn't give a good performance. And I just think, I don't know what those people are watching, but I mean, any of you. They're not chat, watching. They're not watching Outlander. They're not, wa they're not seeing <laughs> what we're seeing. Yeah. Maybe like one of you might agree that he wasn't good, but I thought he was very restrained and that's what he does that's jamie for me you know he's um he is more emotionally intelligent than the the, the buffoons surrounding him uh, yeah are we gonna get specifics now not yet hang on hang on no, I know you're dying. <laughs> everybody in hold fact, back hold back like come on because no, i'm gonna basically shut up now and i want i want you to drive this conversation because you've got specifics out the wazoo so you Please go ahead and because I know you've all got stuff you want to talk about. So just go for it. I want to hear this because I'm curious to hear this all so that I can then go and watch it later and then maybe appreciate it a bit more. Off, off talk about the buffoon. Let's talk about the buffoon bit. I don't know about okay. anybody else, but let's start with there. 
if you know you know so my favorite one of my favorite parts about it was Sam's performance where you've got Tom Christie and I'm pretty sure it's Alan Christie come in guns are yep. blazing uh, well like they all they, they look like puffed up pigeons and I'm like <laughs> you're gonna get put in your place and you've got scene happens and you've got Jamie standing there he's very controlled very stern and then you've got Alan Christie going off like you know showing his weapons and trying to throw punches here and there and you've just got Jamie very stoic just that we've all said it before that little twitch in his eye I really enjoyed that bit what did what did you guys think I thought the the whole scene was brilliant on everybody's part. And um, mm. I think it was very well directed because each of the five characters in the scene had a different journey and was receiving yeah. what was happening in a completely different way. And the director managed to capture it. And I think each actor actually hit every, you know, and I, I was kind of fond of the slap myself, but um, <laughs> I really, really liked that that everyone yeah. was in, it was so inclusive. So it built beautifully. So it was one of my mm. favorite scenes actually in, in, in the episode. Yeah, I totally agree. I think um, Sam, yeah, as you say, he just managed his emotions so well and he was taking it all in because you could see him thinking, um, oh my gosh, what's my wife thinking here? She's just recovered, she's almost died, this young girl, and then she's by my wife's protege and then I've got her brother who's got a knife and he's about to stab me and punch me. And and the, and interestingly, I was really surprised how um, how Tom Christie responded. I thought he was going to be really violent and aggressive and uh, out of control. Um, mm. But I could see the, the feeling in his and the, and the hurt and the pain and the... Um, what, what does this mean for his daughter? Like, I felt like he took a real turn for me in this episode, actually, generally speaking, even if we go to that the scene with Katrina um, where she asked him to give a stool, which is hilarious. And um, then he, he escorted her back. I thought he was going to chuck her out and kick her out and, and, and yeah. then just slam the door. But he holds out her his arm and and his, his performance, he, he, he really, he surprised me. It started with that scene, um, Tom Christian. But as you say, D Diane, so beautifully articulated uh, the director just just allowed all the all the actors to um you know, do their own journey in that scene and I kind of just had the big backhand slap from Katrina oh. and she's so tall and Mal was so like and I yeah. uh, just is so short like I just it was I just yeah it was great yeah anyway. I loved that Stacey? I loved that scene as well um everything that you guys said um agree um there was and one of the the beauties of being able to watch it multiple times is like being able to like focus on a different person each time in that scene. I don't know if anyone else mm. does that or I'm just yep. a nerd, yes. oh, but, yes. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just being able to like watch a different journey each time. And so, and like, oh my gosh, just Jamie's face in that first moment, you can tell he's like, why, why do you need me here? Okay. I'll, and that little half smile he does, to be like it's okay like you can it's a safe space like you can tell us yeah no idea what's coming for him just I like know. no idea and that that um that split second of because jamie is always he's got such a good poker face like that's one of his mm. characteristics right and that that first what is just was like brilliant and then you could see he like gathers himself after that but then he side eyes Claire and sees Claire's oh. like look of horror. And then exactly. You can tell he's like, all he really wants to do is talk with Claire, but he now yes. has these people in his house. And mm. I just thought it was, thought it was so great. And like, um, yeah, Tom's, it was interesting because the second or third time I watched it, I started to be like, does Tom buy this? I kind of get the feeling that he doesn't buy it, but he's going along with it, yeah. you know? And then even, and then when Claire slaps Malva, he almost does like a closes his eyes and like, like, you know, here, cause he knows this is hurting Claire. Um, and yes, Jessica Reynolds, what a dynamo that young lady yeah. is. Um, just, it was just amazing all around. And then to just see Alan 
be such a try hard thinking he's gonna like <laughs> punch Jamie Fraser and he, Jamie's like okay um <laughs> so I absolutely loved that scene and you can watch it so many times and like pick up different things each time as well so definitely agree wow yeah that's fascinating um you know I we should probably just talk more at length about um Claire because I feel like you know she's been a bit underutilized this season for good reason you know obviously Katrina was pregnant at the time and um you know she had been through a lot in the previous season so it makes sense for Claire to be in this more traumatized <clears throat> meek and mild place I suppose but we got now Katrina to really uh let loose especially in the second half of the episode I really loved that I loved it how you know, when she said to Jamie, um, none of us really want to be here. Oh. We don't belong here, I think, is the words. Mm. Um, that was said with so much pain and so and there was so much behind that that we all know because we've been following this journey. And yet they're there because they they love him and they love each other. Um, that was that was really good writing and Katrina sold it beautifully. I would love you guys to tell me what you thought about the whole that whole monologue because I think that was probably the apex. Well, it was for me of the episode emotionally. Who would like to go first? I I liked it um, because you had the whole scene before the baby introduction um, of them in the bed. You know, basically um, foreshadowing that you're faithful and everything like that. Yes. And yeah, so it was massive telegraphing with that scene. And I was watching them when they were in the bed and you're like, oh my God, come on, come on. Let's let's get on with it. Let's get on. I know you love each other. Let's get on. We're watching this because <laughs> oh you love God. each other. I let's love those on. moments so much too. That's so funny. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, let's get on. We know you love each other. So you have the whole baby thing and then you have Claire's split moment, like just that little bit of doubt where she slaps Malvin and then she goes in and then they finally, like, it was actually nice to see that they could have, for want of a better phrase, an adult conversation about something and that they, and she trusts him implicitly and she's like, but do I belong here? I can't deal with this. I've been sick. And she's sort of starting to put two and two together that she didn't have this tree. So, um, yeah, I really, I liked it. Um, and then, you know, Jamie gets all, you know, raw and says, I slept with another woman. And she's like, well, who, when, where? Thinking it's while she's at the Ridge. It was back, you know, 20 years ago. So that was kind of cute that they could still come, after something so major, they could still come together and be the Jamie and Claire that we love so much. Yeah, and that's interesting you say that because, um, one of the things I loved about this episode were there's so many questions it raised as well. But um, as she walked out the door, um, it left you thinking, oh, how is she going to respond to this? How? Mm. And then they come together in the in the barn, and <clears throat> you're thinking, I is he going to say, do you still love me? Are you still faithful? It was none of that. It was a given that she loved him. It was a given that she's faithful yes. with that previous that previous scene and it just played out so differently to how people would expect and this is one of the things I love about Outlander it just it takes you down a road that you don't expect and these guys once again Jamie and Claire they are through thick and thin um, together and trust each other and are faithful and their love and that sounds so sentimental and ridiculous but it really just carries them through everything and that line where she says to Malva just to flip to another scene you know, he and I have gone through things you could never, ever, right? Yeah, girl. But so anyway, that balance scene was just like, I mean, the two of them, the tennis, right? Was that Stacey mm. that said that? Um, that? That's why they're the lead characters. That's why they still are carrying this show. Um, and and I disagree. I think Sam did a great job. Um, Agreed. I, I felt the writers could have given him, this is one thing I will say, I felt it was very rushed. I wanted to see when, when she was dying, I mm. wanted to see more. I was expecting yes. the faith. You know that deleted scene in Faith, so angry they didn't put it in, but where he comes and he's pleading, he's got his tears pouring down his face. Like that was his daughter. This is his wife dying. And, and I've, that's one th criticism, disappointment, whatever word you want to use. 
I felt he could have sat in that and really just just smashed it. And I think the writers, it's the writers, it's not him, it really just undervalued his performance there. And I guess it was a bit rushed and that's it was jam-packed. And But I think when she was dying, I wanted to have his heart ripped out. Interesting. Yeah. I have a counterpoint to that when we get to that. Yeah, we get to that point. But um, I totally agree with you on that. The that stable scene. That is exactly the scene I was talking about, where it was like two tennis pros oh. just going back and forth. Um, I I loved it, and I'm I as someone who this is the first season I've watched um, where I've read the book. So that was a scene. I'm not gonna lie. I was like a little nervous. Cause I was like, I was nervous that they were going to go for the drama and play with the audience and make us think that Claire really did believe that he did this God. for more, for more than like a flicker of a doubt. Like I was really nervous. Cause I'm like, God, oh, that's not Jamie and Claire though. That's right. But I, mm. but I thought it was perfect. I thought it was because it's, it, of course, you know, it's natural for her to have like a little, a little flicker of, of doubt, like that's human, right? And she recalls that, which she thought might've been a hallucination, but I love, um, I loved that scene. I loved how, you know, he was stationary, like he was very still and you could see, and this is why I think Sam did amazing because you could see the tension in his body. Like you could see, mm. like he was like fiddling with his hands and he was really, really tense, right? Like he was doing the drumming with his hands. He was really, mm -hmm. really tense, right? But he was like, and it was like, she was the one pacing with all the energy and he just stayed still. And then kind of, you know, she worked out, she gave that amazing, beautiful monologue. And then at the end when she was like, you know, but, and I, I know you do, unless, unless you're going to tell me that's not true. And he's like, no, not mm -hmm. ever, but I do have something to tell you. And the look <laughs> on her face, I was like, Oh my goodness. Like, I like just rip, rip it out. Uh, and I, it, out I just amazing. Oh. Uh, right. And, and the way, and the way she delivered, I'm obsessed with this line delivery, the way she just goes who and when, like the yeah. way she like granted, I was like, I was, I loved it. Um, and so that was a scene I was nervous for. Um, and I thought that I, I loved it. I, I really, really loved, it was like staged differently than you might expect but yeah. I really mm. enjoyed it um and then yeah and remind me to go back to my counterpoint for the lack of Jamie grief when we get there okay good Diane um I I would concur with everything I really liked the way it was staged and we had a a group uh kind of discussion a week ago and uh, one of our pals uh named Shelley said something very interesting she said she loved it being in the stable and it was almost as if Jamie was a horse whisperer and Claire was this wild colt. And it, and of course she has all these different emotions. And of course it brought me back to that wonderful, you know, you know, I think it was like the first episode where he's taming a horse and he episode says something two. about, oh, she's a girl with spirit and that's, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Anyway, so I thought that was great. I thought the dynamic was, was amazing between the two. I would say I had just two reservations. One, that in the scene in the book, she talks about her age and they transpose those lines brilliantly, I might add, to Melba in the end. I have no argument with that. But essentially, because when she, I love it when he comes out and she goes, well, you don't have much faith in my faith, you know, but there is an element as a more mature woman um, there is an element where Malva's this beautiful young thing. And despite, it's not that she doesn't have faith in him. She maybe doesn't have faith in herself. And so I, I, I wish they might have touched on that. Just, just a ping, just a, just a ping, because mm. I do think that is part of her emotional journey in that. I would also say that, and I, I love Sam. I love Katrina. I've got to say they hurt themselves a little bit with pacing. I think sometimes that when emotions are, and they hit all the emotions, but when your emotions are pouring out like that, sometimes just the speed in which they're spilling out actually brings so much more validity. Like I, I would use an example of when um, John 
was talking about Will to, and it looked like, oh God, he's being so insensitive. Well, I don't think he is. I think he's very nervous. I think he's very excited. He wants Sam to know that his son is just like him and that he's doing a good job bringing him up. So it spills out. And mm. I think that we actually judged him a bit because he actually wasn't very fast in his delivery. It didn't feel like it was spilled out. Right. So those are my two minor. That's fascinating. But I'm I love up, the scene. I'm glad you brought up pacing because sometimes I complain about the pacing too. Um, mm. And I, I can't really think of an exact example now, but I felt like here's, this is not really pacing, but here's another thing. And then, and then I want to hear Stacey's counterpoint because I'm curious now. But um, <laughs> so she's dying. And then we kind of, I felt like, did I fall asleep and wake up? And then suddenly she had short hair and it was all over. I just was like, hang on. Mm. I don't get it. Yeah. What's happening? I had to ask. I'm like, did I, did I not off? I, uh, uh, no, it was just weird how that they did that. I wanted more. Like, I just wanted a little bit more on that. And then I was like, geez, is she going to be on this really ugly wig for the whole season? But thankfully, obviously. Like, <laughs> Her hair grew fast. <laughs> really ugly. It did um, grow fast, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Um, so, yeah, that's something that I had an issue with. I just thought that was very rushed. I think you guys have touched on that beautifully. I, I totally agree. But I want to hear more about what Stacey thinks about this, um, the grief angle, because... Um, I'm not real. I'm in two camps. I'm not really sure how to feel about it. So go ahead. Yeah. So, so what I'll say is when I initially watched it, yeah, I did feel that that was missing. And, and to be fair, it's not something that we really see much in the book because her illness is all from her point of view in the book. Right. So we hear secondhand about mm his like how like grief stricken he was and how he cried when he saw her hair and and that sort of stuff and because we're with her in the book we get a sense of like how close to death she really is like she's like leaving her body and is you know about to die and then sees Melva touch Jamie by the window and says oh no that won't do and comes back to her body it would, <laughs> I, that would have been great if we could have gotten that somehow I love me a jealous petty Claire but oh. um, <laughs> love it but um, so it is something that I was hoping the show might take the opportunity to add that we don't necessarily get to see in the, in the book. Um, mm. And they, they didn't really. And I was torn because I was like, I know Sam would have killed that. Like we've seen he can hit those emotional scenes. We've seen it. Like this is the love of his life. Like we know he's absolutely terrified. I do agree. It did feel really rushed. Like she was recovered in 10 minutes and you're like, wait mm -hmm. but I will say with watching it a few more times and, and honestly I can't even fully take credit for these ideas uh, I've listened to a few podcasts that gave a completely different perspective where I was like hmm okay um one is called Podlander or drunk cast where they talked about they felt that the point they made too was that um Sam was playing Jamie as if Jamie was trying to behave the way Claire would in the sense that compartmentalize mm -hmm. there's stuff to do carry on. I like, you can see the fear. Like he did in that one scene, he's looking at her in, in the bed. Like you could see there's, he's worried. He's, he's stressing. He's not going to break down. That's not Jamie. It's too soon for that, but he's going to try to keep on carrying on for her. Um, and also saying, you know, that the writing is, is giving credit to the audience in the sense that we know this relationship so well, we know Jamie is worried. We know he's terrified. They don't need to hit us over the head with it. Um, and I can see that point. Like I can, I, and I can understand why they don't want to take 40 minutes to like drag her illness out because that doesn't progress the plot that much. Like they would have really had to you know, I think they had to leave space for stuff in the last two episodes. So this episode was like, bam, bam, bam. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's like an interesting perspective that I hadn't maybe thought of before. And I can, I can totally appreciate that. And I can totally see that. Um, but I, I mean, of course, I would have loved to have seen just like a little bit more of like Jamie really like grieving kind of like we got in 509 last season where Claire was like really worried after the snake bite. But mm -hmm. We also, we, the ether is also not in the book. So I don't know mm -hmm. what emotional journey we're about to be on with that. So mm -hmm. it could be, they don't want two big things back to back. Like maybe Jamie and Claire are going to oh, yeah. have an emotional blowout. I, I, I'm going to reserve judgment. Yeah. Um, 
but that's just something I thought was in which was interesting, which is why I like talking with people and listening to podcasts and like getting a different perspective, right? Instead of just like tunneling into what I would have liked to have seen. So anyway, yeah, yeah I mean, that's a uh, yeah, that's that's a that's a fair point, and I think um, and also you saying that you know we're trying to lead into something and then not trying to give us everything now. And I just keep, you know, just that that line of Katrina's or Claire's, the war is coming, the war is coming. And I wonder, Rob, with you saying, you know, it's just, it's been good season, but I'm still waiting for something to happen. Maybe they're just waiting for this war is coming, war is here episode and just letting us kind of do a slow build up to that. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But um, mm. the interesting point, Stacey. Yeah. Couple things about that. Mm. Um, I didn't need a necessarily a big blow up. I was shocked at some things that easily could have been done without time, and that is the fact that he was perfectly quaffed, and that um, and, <laughs> and and you know, I mean, distraught would be disheveled. And I also think that if you had yeah. maybe invested in that that the time that actually a week has gone by uh, would have helped. And I actually, okay. I'm going to do a woulda, coulda, shoulda, <laughs> okay? Please because see. people are like, well, they didn't have enough time. So I just want you to imagine this, because sometimes when I criticize, I actually try to see what could be a possible solution. So just want you to imagine this, okay? okay. It's late at night. The camera, almost as if it's coming through the door, gets on the bed, the bed is empty. Okay, so there's a false thing there. The camera goes towards the bathtub and you see Jamie's back and he is giving Claire a bath, trying to cool down her fever, which is he knows that's what you do. And that's all you have. Maybe he actually pulls her hair out of her face. Probably the last time he'll touch her hair before what happens. Maybe he takes a cloth and as he's wiping it on, maybe he does that lip, throw back to another scene. Mm -hmm. And you just have that image. It would have taken maybe, and maybe the camera backs away and you can just see from his body or maybe he starts to sob. That's it, 10 seconds. I love that. There. You add all wow. the fact that you bathe, the idea that you bathe a body before death because you want yeah. the body to go clean that would have taken maybe 12 seconds mm. so i just i just wanted to put that out because paula for you um <laughs> for you that. but also and, and for you too robert but the I other thing i would have to say that the criticism i i loved uh sam in this uh show i think some of the criticism might have been in the malva scene because yeah. Yeah, it was kind of weird, but he was there perfectly quaffed, having a casual conversation. And I know people are like, well, he looked into the fire and stuff like that. I truly believe that Jamie would have been kind to Malva, who's there and being so loyal, and would have let her try to comfort him. Not that it would be successful, but somehow I didn't feel... I didn't feel whether it's because he's downstairs and his wife is dying upstairs. I didn't feel a thrum underneath that. I would say I that scene, which I thought was kind of weird to begin with, but it lacked um, something underneath for me for Sam. It was just a bit too casual. I yeah, just, I don't know, mm -hmm. but yeah, like having telling about his great grandfather, like oh, yeah. it's like you make small talk. I understand that, but. We try to see what the the writers were doing with Melba in that scene. We, 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 yeah. we could see it, but um, no, you know what, Diane? I I totally agree with you. That scene, yeah, he was a little bit underdone, and um, and yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, like I I agree as well. I think I like I actually like Stacey's point because I tell you, if I, if I had had another scene of like the melodrama, I would have probably honestly started rolling my eyes a little because <laughs> we've been there, we've done that, we've got the T-shirt. And I was happy to just be like, okay, we know 
I think what they said earlier really hit home with me. And maybe that's just from my perspective. Like I am generally not uh, into the whole, you know, lovey-dovey stuff. That's just me. Um, and I was happy for it to just for us to move on because we know how he feels. But again, I understand. But I know, I'm, I'm being facetious now. I'm being sarcastic. But like we're all a little greedy and we want to see some fireworks and we want to see this tease. And I get that too. So I just think it's really good that we can have this kind of discussion about a show like this where it's there's so many perspectives and angles and we can constructively criticize it. We still love it. Um, so all of your viewpoints have been so interesting. Oh, there's some other stuff I'd love to talk about before we run out of time. And that is the end with the, you know, the Malva death scene and before Claire discovers her in the grass or whatever you want to call it. Um, it took that me a while to work out what was going on. I'd love to hear your perspectives on what was going on there. And by the way, everybody just ignore the cat in the background. Just because ignore. <laughs> he is like the boss of our whole family and he, we just have no choice. So uh, that's Oscar, by the way. Um, what did you think yeah, that's of that, Stacey? The um, uh, sort of the, the whole end part. Yeah. Um, I... Or do you mean the bit before... The, 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 the ether hallucin about, hallucination? Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. The whole thing leading mm -hmm. up to the death. I I found it really interesting and I mean I'm someone that is finding the Claire's struggle with ether like I'm finding it really interesting this season and so I thought it added a really interesting dimension that like as a book reader it throws something in there they're like I don't I kind of don't know what's gonna happen like I don't know how that's gonna impact things um you know because I love how it's one of those moments where she starts to have the panic attack she's being shunned like the one thing that she can throw herself into is being a healer and she can't even do that because like nobody's going to her I just want to give her a hug and then you know good old Lionel Brown creeps in there she, it starts the panic spiral she goes to look outside oh great here comes Malva I can't yeah. nope nope delete brain needs to <laughs> shut down I can't do it I can't do it so she goes and we can hear Melva like very like mistress mistress um and I think I quite quickly realized to me that it was like she was hallucinating, like dreaming, because we know she mm. just took the ether. The it kind of looked like fisheye lens ish, like it was very weird. And mm. then, and then as she started to say like "you're of the devil," and as that Diane pointed out, the lines that she says are lines that she has in the book that she's saying to herself, like being like "you could under you could understand it," like "your hair's going gray," "you're old," "you're this," "she's young and beautiful." So I thought it was really interesting because it's still Claire saying it to herself in the way of Malva mm. saying it in her nightmare. And I thought that was really interesting. Love that we got the, I will effing kill you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh. I was waiting for that all episode. Oh, baby. <laughs> um, and then I really, I really appreciate that when she woke up and she went out and then there was that absolutely heart wrenching scene which like I can't even fathom the fact that like Katrina was pregnant herself oh. filming that like cesarean yeah. like oh well but um but what I love is that it adds in like a dynamic of is Claire gonna start to doubt herself is Claire gonna feel more guilt because she saw Malvo coming what if what if she opened the door like would Malvo still be alive would yes. like I think this might be part of what causes her eventual spiral to kind of coming clean with Absolutely. Jamie. And, because also mm. the, Jamie's going to be like, oh, what were you doing, Claire? Did you did you see anyone outside? Did you not hear anything? And what's she going to say? Uh, well, I was taking a nap. Like, so <laughs> I'm taking, I, a nap. taking a nap. I mean, so I, I was, I thought it was a really... Um, cool way to like throw off book readers too in a way that still made sense for me anyway wow. yeah opinion. yeah I want to hear I more agree. Um, what about you Diane oh everything um and I want to uh, <laughs> everything you just said felt exactly like I could feel the setup coming I also this is like a minor thing but I love detail and for them having Malva body shake as she's cutting open, sorry, yeah. this is this is like just just oh, yeah. just like 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 detail, yeah. not like like the beautiful no, <laughs> um, deep you know assessment. But I really really 
<clears throat> love that. And I love the, um, the nightmare, everything about, I thought the, that the episode from, I think probably maybe the stable scene on yeah. was just brilliant. And yes. the way they built uh, Katrina, um, Claire's journey, just, I don't know why she was walking out of the meeting house, but when she was walking out of the meeting house, and I swear that it looked like she became 10 feet tall as she was mm. bracing herself to walk away. And you just heard, never be afraid of who you are. And then the aloneness in the surgery. I mean, everything about that build to where she is. I was very grateful. I know a lot of uh, Tony is very controversial, but I actually thought that build was nigh on brilliant actually. Yeah. You know, and I wanted to just uh, go back to the Christie scene because I thought that the Christie scene with uh, Claire was amazing. Yeah. And there was, it was like, there was nothing to it. And yet there was everything to it. Not to mention the hat, which I still wish was Murda's, which I know it wasn't, but it should have been. That would have been cool. <laughs> but uh, um, just watching, that's again, that tennis ball, just mm. watching two pros, just, just, Boom, 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 boom. And the only thing, this is just kind of an overall criticism of, um, or observation. I love the director. I thought aesthetically, there were some yeah. incredible shots, but every once in a while, I thought he didn't quite get a moment. And I would say, for example, in the Christie scene, he's going off on her and then he suddenly changes. He yes. says something like da, 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 da oh, well then do what you have to do or something. He was actually barely in um, the lens. And I actually think what it is, is he's just hauling off and he turns and he sees her head bowed. And then he redirects and goes, well, I suppose that's what you have to do, get it, get it on. And there were a couple of moments like that, like when Malva insisted twice that she wanted to go with Claire. And you didn't see, and it's funny because it's actually in the script and, and kind of a different way. You didn't actually see Claire smile. And I think that people, that, that the Malva Claire relationship had to be rushed, but I think it would have been divine to have seen Claire just, just feel how much like little Malva is like her. And it was just camera work because uh, Katrina's head bowed down, but you didn't capture the smile. Mm. So it was, there were, I would say there were about five, I won't go into all of them, but there were about five of those that I think really would have just rounded out the story. Yes. So, yeah. One tech, technical. That's what brings you know me, it. shut me up, technical. <laughs> no, but you're right. That's what would have elevated this probably to that next level to like maybe the faith level. Uh, yeah. Episode, uh, Dragonfly and Amber and all the episodes that we look on Timely Resurrection. Um, what about you, Dimity? What What were your thoughts on the, the lead up to Malva's untimely death? Oh, look, I concur with the other ladies as well. Um, I just love that you just got this inner monologue from Claire's point of view. How is she? How is she coping? How is she processing uh, this whole this whole scenario? And then it takes it back, takes us back, and once again. In Katrina's like the limited things that she can say about this season um, is that the trauma, the PTSD that she's suffering. I really love that they took us back to her in that, and then and then you took it took us to her her surgery. There's no one there. Like as you said, like what has she got? You know, the thing that she she loves to do and the thing that she it's her passion. And you know, it, it was a really great kind of summary of where things are at for her. And then you know. Then with Malva coming and Lionel Brown, get oh that's right, she's still suffering this PTSD. The poor woman, her husband's, you know, and and then that's her way of coping. And then that that inner monologue of um, Malva coming and saying you're old and you're shriveled up, and you're going, it's, it's just so realistic about how they how a woman would feel. Diane, I'm an older woman as well. I'm fifty, and so I think like she's real. That's the thing I love about Claire. The thing that she's she's experiencing is things that I would experience and they really grounded that in that moment, like in terms of the PTSD and that monologue, that, that dialogue, um, <clears throat> kind of saying, you know, you're old. 
Um, I mean, we don't have time. I'd love to talk about, and we probably can't talk about, but that whole scene when Claire comes to Malva and tries to plead with her, like you really see that protege, that um, relationship, and you feel like Claire's almost got her, like Malva breaks down and then the brother comes in and ruins it. But that was a really amazing scene. Um, apart from the line that you know Katrina said about you know that can te- can't tear us apart part or whatever it is, and then and then I was waiting for that, you know, when she said "Don't come to my family," I was waiting for that murder scene, you know, I know not not murder, um, Dougal scene, where she yeah. really gives it back, you know, back in the a couple of seasons ago, and she just I was waiting, and then but then I realised afterwards they 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 left it for that scene with Malva with the scalpel. And she really gave it then. So, yes, I, I think that was lovely. I loved Cle- Katrina's voiceovers. Yeah. Um, it's been a criticism, criticism I've had in the previous season. They've kind of left them. But, uh, yeah, that, I thought they were really done well. And um, we want to finish with her. Um, and a horrific, horrific scene. I'd love, like, Rob, if you get to talk to Katrina again, I'd love to, like, she has touched on how she coped being pregnant and she kind of joked by saying, you know, saying my son, oh, look, it's not really me. You know, this is not really me. I'm acting. She did say that in an interview. But but as a mother and um, as a, you know, well, you are a mother when you're pregnant, but also how that how that impacted her. And they, I did see that she, um, I read, no, I read that they had the doctor on site to um, give a technical advice about the cesarean and the cutting and say classic outlander and, and Diana gabbled on um, the medical background is it's real so but that that just oh that scene was mm. and no. I have to say one sorry one more thing no, about ahead. this that you know when she we went back to the barn scene where she says um, I don't belong here I thought that's why she should have got an Oscar yeah that line <laughs> that line from a different show, that is why even a nomination. Anyway, I'm just like, I'm with you, Stacey, and with everyone, but, like, oh, my so, gosh. Sorry, that's Christmas. it. I'll be here for Christmas talking about that Oscar thing. I know. Um, Paula, do you want to give everybody a quick rendition of what you were doing when uh, she gave that that line with the knife? and Because <laughs> you were pretty, like, yeah. this is, that's your personality in just one scene, yeah? Yeah, um, <laughs> there were a few expletives, but I was like, yeah. Um, but oh, I can't, I'm so sorry. I cannot remember who said it. I think it was Stacey. The whole um, Malva relationship, it's right. I feel it was very rushed. We can say that now that she's now gone. Um, because, and I think you even echoed it, Rob, in the fact that I wanted to like her because she was the protege. But I felt like there was just... They had to show her the city throughout the whole thing. It was too, as an audience member, we didn't get to like Malva enough to feel her loss, which I'm sure Claire is now going to have to deal with because we saw her duplicity, we, whereas Claire didn't. Um, so I wanted, as, an, as a viewer, I wanted to be able to feel Claire's loss. And the only way you could do that is without seeing all the duplicity. But as a book reader, I already knew what was coming, but I would have liked to have not seen of it, seen it as much. Um, so, and yeah. Oh no, sorry. I thought you. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention? Because there's, there's something that I wanted to raise. Huh? I'm oh, sorry. Is it about go ahead. Malva? My bad. Is it about yeah, Malva ahead, though? Oh no, because uh, yeah. I was going to move on. It's about Malva. Oh, well, just quickly, um, the the uh, the cesarean, and then of course yeah. the you know the baby, the the stillborn. I guess you call it, her him. I can't remember. Um, obviously, there's some kickbacks to faith, and yeah. the word faith is said numerous times throughout mm-hmm. the episode. This episode, Jamie's faith and his faithfulness. And then, of course, then and we had that. I mean, that was, yeah. Obviously, a lot of that is intentional. Um, what What did you all think about that link to that great episode? Yeah, I appreciated I it too. I liked it, um, but it's not sort of sit down and you have a discussion like this that you go, oh, oh, I get the telegraphing now. 
Yeah. Not till you pull, like for an English teacher, it's not till you pull it apart that you actually see it and go, oh, okay, that was telegraphing right there. Yeah, right from the, even the beginning where they go to see the McNeils and the the, the, the young baby dies. Um, yeah. And then, you know, and then from there, when she's awoken and she's talking to Jamie about when they lost faith and mm. the, the, the hallucinations and stuff that she had there. And like, there's definite tie-ins of that loss. And even, you know, when she brings that up, I just love how Sam is Jamie. Like you can see it's still painful for him too, because when she brings it up, you can see a reaction from him too. And like, and I know, I know you found those scenes slow, Paula. I loved them. I loved them when he was like, <laughs> When he was like chiding her from coming back from Tom and he's like, you're not allowed to kill yourself. And then he just says, like, that the, I, liked. I, liked I that loved one. it. And like, you know, when he says like, you know, and this is a line out of the book when he says, you know, when I hear you rustling around in your surgery, like, I know that you're there. If, if you were to no longer be there or somewhere, then the sun would no longer come up or go down. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is why I love them. Like this, like, I just like that stuff just melted me. So I, I love those moments. Cause I feel sometimes we don't get I'm I mean I'm I'm selfish I love the all of the Jamie and Claire moments but but yeah and so the the theme of faith throughout it too and I appreciated how they have little nods to like Jamie feeling that loss too and and you know these two are on quite an emotional it's it's an emotionally turbulent Mm. season for them as a couple like they're still very strong but like it's been it's been every, everything around them has been like conspiring against them so yeah who else would like to um Timothy, do you have anything to add on the faith angle i i picked it up i uh, loved it i just um i, I do lo- enjoy them as a couple reflecting back on their past experiences and them kind of yeah, going through the emotions again. I think that's they're realistic of a couple. Um, and then, of course, the the, the notion of faith, um, the word faith and what that meant kind of telegraphing through the episode was really, really clever and lovely. And, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and then even in the barn scene, you could see that, they, that their faith was like they still have faith in each other and they're faithful. They're both faithful, and that was really brought out in that scene. And um, yeah, it was. It was. I loved it. And Diane. Uh, well, for, I totally agree with you. I think at a discussion, I asked. I said, "Did it strike anybody that they said the word faith a lot during this yeah. episode?" So I was right there with you. I also thought it was interesting. It was nice to call back. Maybe a little too much, but when she said when we lost faith and i really appreciated that she said we i know that sounds like really weird no 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 i agree he was there and lost the child and the fact she said we lost faith that just sent my heart i mm. anyway i don't know if that's book or anything but i just loved that they yeah. that they did that oh yeah. i picked that up too i agree what i um what the word faith means something to outlander fans book lovers and show lovers because of those of us not firstly those of us who are um, in her families who've maybe lost a child or had a miscarriage and you know many many people have been through that um and it and it's um to me it gives me perspective every time you're having a bad day or you, you're going through a rough patch you've got to remember that pain that you went through which it kind of that's your perspective circuit breaker. That's how I look at it. Mm. But then also everybody's been through some kind of grief, grieving or loss. And I think when faith comes up, I just find that to be a really great way to remind the audience of how much these two have been through together. And that's yeah. what I love about the show most of all. Um, we're running out of time, unfortunately. We could be here all day. Um, but there's the only other thing I want to quickly mention, and Paul, I don't know if you had something that you want to quickly mention. I know you've got to go soon. Oh, uh, uh, yes. I, I just, I don't know if anybody, speaking of faith, I don't know if anybody noticed that the episode actually opened up with Roger giving a sermon. Yeah. So we're back in the yeah. meeting house and faith and people have lots of different faiths, like not just faith in each other and faith as a name, but faith in regards to religion as well. I just thought it was really 
as a thing. Have a work hold. upside down for the window. Yeah. Clever. Clever. Do yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I, um. Well, I wanted to bring up Roger and um and Bree because I know in the past, particularly with Diane, you've mentioned that they're so underutilized. Particularly Bree, where was she when her mother was about to cark it? That's an Australian term for die. <laughs> Um, I like it. <laughs> yeah, cark it. Um, where was she? And so that wasn't that's irritating to me. I don't see enough safety skeleton. But putting that aside, I think Rick Rankin is so brilliant. He is like my guy. Like that's the one that I relate to the most because he's like, I'm not religious, but he's a leader. And I feel in my job, in my life, I'm a leader. And I just look up to him. I like the way he leads, he's calm, he's just good natured. And, um, you know, he's a preacher on the show now or whatever he's trying to do. I love that character. I want to see more. I wish we had more episodes so we could just spend more time with him. Uh, that's my view. So just I thought, why don't we just have a quick final thought if you want to touch on that point and then just uh, give us a final thought and then we'll call it a day. So how about we go to you first, Indy? Yeah, I, I've read about Roger and Bree in this season. They're kind of like the calming influence on the, on the ridge. And I do, I do have seen that in the episodes. Um, and I think I totally agree with you with Brie. Like I thought, she's sitting next to her mum reading. What is she reading? <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't even say what she's reading. She didn't read out what she was reading. And, um, I mean, she kind of, yeah, they kind of uh, summarised it well when she said, you know, mummy can't die and all that kind of stuff. But, like, it, that didn't make sense to me. Like she's right next to her mum reading. Like, so I agree there. Um and, yeah, I really enjoy uh, Roger and Bree have really, and particularly Roger, have come, he's come into his own. And the, I love the little, um, the scene with his, as a historian, you're going to really enjoy this, you know, going with Jamie as an historian. And he goes, yeah, yeah. So kind of harking back to his um, his previous career and then also, you know, spending time in his new career. I think they're a very calming influence and I think I'm looking forward to seeing what else happens with them. But I'd like to see more of them as well. Uh, Sophie Skelton is, she's just a breath of fresh air. I, that's why I feel like she is. And, um, yeah, I, I wasn't a great fan of the both of them when, they, when I first met them. But um, now I, I think they're playing a really significant role on the ridge and their acting performances are really fantastic. Agreed. Um, what about you, Stacey? Yeah, um... It's interesting because Roger is a character I, I basically ever since, what was it, episode 403, where him and Brie at that music, at the music festival and that scene where, like, I have struggled with his character ever since then. Like, yeah. and I've tried to put myself in his, like, I get it, religious household, it's the 70s, but I just, oh, I really struggled with, you know, the, the, with him from there and just um but I will say sort of the, the tail end of um season five and then really into season six like again Roger has I feel like Roger has grown so much and he really is coming to coming into his own and, and him and Brie are so much more settled now and Brie is Brie is in gaining that confidence and we're, we're getting to see her use a little bit more of her like engineering skills and and that sort of stuff and um, and I, and it's interesting that they had Roger and Bree sort of be the first ones that Claire sees when she wakes up from her illness and, mm. and sort of Roger's right there, like showing a nod to like that mm. Roger and Claire friendship that has, that has existed. And then Bree being there and getting to do the, like, you're not allowed to die on me. And, mm. um, just like some really, really sweet, sweet moments, um, and so, yeah, I, I really appreciate both of their roles and, and, and um, Sophie and Richard, I think are doing amazing. And, and yeah, I mean, and I, it's interesting because I've seen so much feedback on this episode and I'm pretty positive on it. But again, I've wa I, it took me to the second watch to like start to appreciate um, other, other things. But I think it's cool that everyone can sort of talk about it and, and see, you know, different pieces um yeah. but but ultimately i'm i am enjoying this season and i'm just like sitting here snickering to myself robert as you're talking about like i'm waiting for things to happen and then like <laughs> well 
Well, Ask and you <laughs> shall receive, my friend. Oh, I, know, I keep getting that from the couch whenever we're watching it. She's like, be patient, be patient. It's coming. Um, mm-hmm. Diane, your final thoughts. Oh, um, I want to go to your Roger and uh, Brie. And this was not my idea. I was listening to a podcast. And I thought it was very interesting when they come back from, um, where were they at the convention, whatever yeah. it's called, and that it was interesting that actually Jamie and Claire danced around each other mm-hmm. as far as the truth was concerned. And yet when you flashed to Roger and Bree, they were telling it like it, w- it is. Yeah. And I thought it was, that was an, and someone brought that up and I think it was at Outlander, the, the Podlander. Yeah, it was the Podlander drunk cast. <laughs> and I thought it was, I mean, I disagree, but I really thought that was a good point. And I do think he's growing. I do think that sometimes I agree um, uh, with, the, with the book. I was like, what? And she looked bored. I was like, really? Your mother's dying and we're just going to bounce on the bed and look bored? Yeah. I also thought that it might yeah. actually have been interesting if she had actually said those lines when Claire was dying. She says it afterwards, which is really kind of sweet, but how incredibly emotionally active if just out of sheer frustration, she starts yelling at her dying mother yeah. and going, you can't, do, you're not going to do this, you know? And then yeah. maybe if he was witnessing it, Jamie would have been a part of knowing he was going to be a grandson. But as an overall, again, what I said at the beginning, I, I think when you look at this episode, you have to appreciate what was there which so much of it was brilliant and then maybe accept the what wasn't there that it might have frustrated you and that I totally agree I think Stacey said that I think they were holding it because of the next two episodes I think something or it didn't be maybe you said that that there's something coming so Mm -hmm. I always kind of sit back and go there's a reason for this it's going to be revisited so have patience Ah! No. <laughs> and, and I tell Diana up there too because she said this is a TV show. <laughs> There's only so much they can put in it as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. She does yeah. say so that often. Okay, mm-hmm. final thoughts to pull over before we, we call it a day. Um, I, I really <laughs> okay. want to see more of Roger and Brie. If we're talking about Roger and Brie, I'd really love to see more of them. Um, just just a little bit more out there like Diane said like even just you know just that little bit more emotion of oh my god you can't die um it it just would be nice to see a little bit more of them and do a little bit more um I just feel like they're a bit in the periphery at the moment um so I'm hoping something happens um but it's actually kind of nice to see Roger is starting to find his place on the ridge so while he's found his place Claire has lost hers um like I think Stacey mentioned how the one thing that kept Claire anchored and centered if everything else was going to hell in a handbasket you know she was a healer she was there were still people to heal and that kept her centered and grounded and now she doesn't have that and she's just got her family with her um and you know you even expressed that little bit of doubt that Bree mentioned on her little walk with Roger um so I hope to see more of them um I can't wait to see what the last two is it 10 episodes yeah Yeah. Uh, can't wait to see what the last two bring out and like Stacy is guessing and I'm agreeing with her that there's probably going to be something big happen we've got to see a conclusion to the ether we've got to see a conclusion to what happened with Malva who killed Malva though I'm sure two people kind of know the same as me um maybe so it? maybe they change it up you're right who knows so I'm intrigued to see what the last two episodes hold. Right. Well, on that note, I want to thank you all so much for the most amazing conversation. I hope we can do it again soon. Thanks, everyone, for joining us as well. Uh, we really appreciate everyone who clicks into Gold Derby um, and watches our little chats. Um, and, yeah, look, make sure you make some comments on this video or on Twitter. Uh, we'll be sure to reply. We'll be back next week for Episode 7. 
And I'm sure I'm going to be inviting these lovely people back for more chats because I frankly just can't get enough. In the meantime, you all have a lovely and safe week and we will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for having us. Thanks. See ya.